Welcome back to Next Normal and uh, the closing session, which is pure woman power. Uh, by the way, happy International Women's Day. So we have uh, Suhila from BMS. Uh, and uh, Suhila, if I understood it correct, you're currently in Florida, right? Yes, correct. Okay, great. So envy on you. And uh, by the way, how are you? <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Then we have Megan Reutin from Grunenthal. Hi, Megan. Same question hey. to you. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing very well. How are you doing yourself? Doing good. And we have Natalia Andrychuk from uh, Ukraine. Uh, I just really have to mention that uh, our prayers and beliefs are with the brave Ukrainian people. And uh, I mean, frankly speaking, it's uh, really a, a big admiration that you even joined this session. Uh, to, to make your uh, time av available for, for speaking. So, uh, again, I, they are very hard to explain my words, but uh, I huge support to, to Ukraine and to the, to the people. So, Natalia uh, prepared a very interesting presentation for our, for our session, which is Contentverse for Patient Experience. We see a very uh, dramatic and rising topic in that regard, and how actually model content can become a game changer. But uh, please, Natalia, the stage is yours, and uh, please prepare uh, the, the, the session with your presentation. Uh, thank you very much for having me um, in this session. It is uh, um, uh, very difficult to say uh, how, how I'm feeling today, because uh, uh, my mind uh, is uh, absolutely occupied with uh, what is happening to Ukraine, to my country, to my home, to everyone's uh, today. Uh, we pray, we hope that um, this will be finished very soon and the life will be back to normal. Our company, Visevan, is working and continuing to service our clients. And um, I want today to talk about the product and the approaches we were building the last 12 years. And we are continuing to build and uh, introduce these ideas in this nice, um, uh, I would say, um, metaphor, which is content verse, right? Because this is a metaphor for how we are feeling about the content in the future and today how all of us have to uh, might be interested to change the way how it is working right now like today all of us um, focused on our own health and it means the industry um, in the digital transformation is focused more on the patient and on the needs of the patient than before. So that means like patient is now on the center stage and that uh, also gives a lot of changes um, outside and inside the industry. What does it mean? Um, we first of all, um, there are a lot of new channels of communications and there, there are a lot of uh, new experiences of how we are delivering value through communication and through expressing our content. That means omni-channel is becoming something which is uh, not the choice, but uh, the need today. We are working with more uh, data. The data and the um, <clears throat> Uh, personal data, the, uh, the data about target audience is uh, paramount and uh, we need to figure out how to work better with, with the data and how to apply it to the right content, how to, be, how to use it in the way that our messaging is be becoming more valuable. Uh, then, of course, uh, we, have, uh, we have to focus on the trusted channels and HCP healthcare professionals professionals are uh, remaining one of the most trustful channels. However, we have also to give more possibility to the patient to find the right content, to have the second opinion, to understand whether uh, it is possible to get into clinical trials or not. So that uh, all of this uh, making uh, all the game is very different. When we uh, talk about the omnichannel iceberg and where we are with omnichannel, 
now today and um, I'm leading uh, towards the uh, what uh, we are doing in reserve and, and to our product we have uh, we have to obtain the absolute um, uh, knowledge and possibility and the tooling um, uh, to be able to make the adjustment and the change of any type of the content for any channel at every part of the customer journey. This is one of the most critical need from the content verse today. So it means once you create a piece of content, it has to be created once, it has to be able to be, able to be edited without uh, so many, I would say, technical difficulties. It has to be published uh, once and uh, retired once at uh, as well. So it means we are not be pasting we are not making uh, like a, a lot of content which is disconnected which is working in silos we have to put the content into the understandable chunks which is modules and to make sure like we have the pr right process in place which and, and the right tool uh, tooling which allows us to work in uh, within uh, this uh, approach um uh, going uh, with the technology, um, is technology our salvation? So, is uh, with with only tooling, do we have the possibility to solve all of our problems? I think uh, the holy grail of the uh, uh, approach, of the modular approach, of the personalization approach, of every modern approach to the content which is driving digital transformation, is we cannot uh, take the new tool integrated like uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, which is highly integrated tools and approaches and use the old fashioned way, what we have, what we were used before to create the content. This is the mistake which many organizations are making. The other mistake is we are really focusing sometimes more on the way how we are really publishing the content and really on the channel side and less on the how we create the content, how we're working with the phrases, how we're building it, how we are uh, build, uh, uh, assembling it together and uh, the uh, tagging and findability of this content. We are paying less attention to this part. So th th this is one of the things which which, uh, really have to drag our attention more these days. Um, I would say another thing which uh, have have to be at our focus is standardization. Uh, it sounds like a, a very paradox because without standardization, it is not really possible uh, to go into the personalization of your messages. And uh, we are working a lot with our customers today, bringing the right tools, the right integration, and the right process and governance, not only uh, to the customer, to the pharmaceutical companies, organization, but to all the vendors who are uh, engaged into the upstream and downstream of the content production. Because going modular and going to uh, uh, personalization of the messages, it, it is the strategic problem. It is more strategic problem than the tools problem or technology problem. That's why there are a lot of efforts to be done uh, for uh, working with all the agencies on upstream and downstream of content life cycle to make sure like they are uh, really understand uh, what are changes to be made on their side so that the content could be created once edited once, retired once, and be highly traceable, right? So going further, uh, digital asset management has to be in the center of content production and uh, in the center of the uh, architecture of all the solutions which are used for content production because uh, uh, having uh, digital asset management as the heart, the center of this process, we do understand that we can centralize and organize all the assets in the single place. We manage end-to-end -end content life cycle from creation to distribution of the content. We find and download digital assets easily in a few clicks. We control 
control all the assets and its structures. We save costs in the end. So that means we can de orchestrate all the process far much easier than before. And the contentverse system with the digital asset management on the, uh, on the center, as, sorry for the ugly drawing, but it looks like uh, um, uh, these planets, which are uh, responsible for uh, all strategic parts of the process, which is not only governance and connectivity, which is also onboarding with all stakeholders, which is taxonomy and tagging, standardization, automation of as many processes as we can automate today, and of course, modularization of content production. So. Uh, going more uh, detailed with the steps which we as a company are advising to do today, it's like, uh, you know, crawl, walk and run. So what we advise to do for uh, with the products uh, such as Evizart and the others. So first of all, to see and uh, uh, understand your technology basis, to understand your baseline and understand the um, uh, possibility across all the systems you have uh, in the company and across all the stakeholders. Um, so how they are connected, what can you achieve with your current setup? So do this audit, like technical audit, and make sure like you are able to connect all of your systems in for the content production flow end to end. Um, so that means like the step number one. The step number two is already modular content, is already modular approach, which means uh, uh, implementation of modular content strategy, there is uh, working with key messages, metadata, and with the integrations with such systems as Evizard for content uh, um, production, automation, and implementation of do-it-yourself approach, the possibility to edit and adjust content of every step of the omni-channel journey. And all of these are leading us towards the automation of the content production, which involves artificial intelligence and all the auto-tagging and auto-suggestions and content auto-generation, even at that level. So these are the three main steps, uh, which are the part of the main uh, approach, which we start usually as a proof of concept with our customers. And according to goals and the appetites uh, of the customer, we are able to go forward. So... Uh, one of the biggest um, the platform which we built for the last 12 years is Evizard, which actually allows all of these uh, um, content production uh, tricks and content production um, uh, modularization and once we go on the feature details so we can see that uh, uh, we can easily cover the briefing, the um, uh, standardization of the content request, the auto-tagging, the modular content development, the all the agency supports, the journey planners and the others. We connect it to Viva Vault as the approval tool and the digital asset management tool. We are able to build and to show you how your uh, content will be looking into the um, modular approach um, uh, paradigm. So when you see uh, the um, same uh, really key message in uh, which is pushed to different channels and um, the system itself rebuild uh, according to the channel specific technical needs, the content and generates the different previews. So it's all technical technicalities, which I would uh, not mention today, but uh, what I would like to mention that there, there is the possibility to try all of these because um, uh, it's not, it's a huge project like uh, modularization of the content, all of the new approach I have been talking right now and the new tooling, it's a huge change, but we developed very fast and very, I would say, um, easy approach how to try it and uh, it is a proof of concept in which we can like in three months like 12 to 16 weeks term to build the integrated solution from uh, based on the uh, 
uh, goals of uh, uh, your uh, company uh, according to your brand needs and uh, you can try and challenge uh, all the system and infra systems and infrastructure uh, which you currently have or want to try in this uh, modular regards with our help. Uh, why we can do it? Because uh, we are um, Viseven, we have built uh, the content acceleration platform. We have been working for this like 12 years and we are continuing to help with the digital transformation of our customers at a different stage of their digital maturity. So whenever questions you have, please ask them. So it's about uh, the presentation and I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Natalia. <clears throat> Thank you for setting the stage. It was a very meaningful and insightful presentation. We also received a couple of questions from our audience. But uh, let's dive, uh, let's deep dive into the conversation uh, based on the questions which you prepared. And the first one would be, uh, we really hear a lot the, the word extension verse, metaverse, content verse, you mentioned now, and so on, uh, which becomes very popular these days. Uh, so how would you actually define content verse and why we need it? And uh, let's start with you, Sophia. Oh, yeah. No, thank you so much. And thank you, Natalia, for this great uh, overview. Very impressive. Yeah, I think reflecting on this uh, on the verse, this usually denotes an area of, uh, of activity of interest uh, distinguished by a particular characteristic. I had to Google to find out exactly what is it. But I like the way that uh, we've seen the association between the universe and the content verse in our case. Uh, and I, I think it's all about uh, the, the how we can leverage the content for uh, the patient experience uh, and, uh, and for the patient centricity approach, right? Uh, for what I think uh, from a pharmaceutical perspective, uh, with the, uh, the uh, empower, uh, empowerment of patients who are becoming more engaged in their healthcare experience themselves, uh, they are looking for information that are accessible uh, through multiple digital platforms. And one example uh, that can be shared is uh, the scientific publication uh, that is now available via open uh, access uh, to provide specific uh, patient access program because it's expressed as a as a requirement and a need from the patient to get a bet, get again, a better understanding and information about the new drugs, the new development, the new clinical trials. Um, but they also look at some other multiple platforms uh, independently, and that can be social media, such as Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And what they are looking for is for educational content on their own disease and some and treatment options. So these content and uh, information uh, will really benefit from um, uh, a, a more uh, specific and personalized uh, approach, uh, really to speak about, to take into consideration the patient language and the information level uh, that uh, will help tailor uh, the patient experience in gathering the information and the awareness they need to be part of the journey. Thank you, Sophia. Megan? So for me, the content verse really is the universe of content um, in its entirety, and that's the whole circle of life um, that Natalia had mentioned, from defining the content strategy, um, including the objectives for exactly where we're looking to take things, why we need things, determining the type of content that would be required. Um, content creation, um, Natalia, you also touched on whether it's dynamic, whether it's hybrid, um, what kind of reuse are we going to have, um, whether we're using crowdsourcing for content acquisition, then also the delivery via campaigns. So ensuring content is um, easy to use, that it's understandable and that it's accessible. A little bit like the W3C standards for websites, but for content across all channels. Um, and I don't think we necessarily need the content verse. I think we're already surrounded <laughs> by content. I'm being <laughs> but for me, the content verse is actually already here. So it's crucial for me that we have our thinking hats on in terms of um, structure and governance and before it grows um, arms and legs any further. Thank you, Megan. Natalia. Yeah, it's a very interesting question and I, I do support Suhila and Med Megan with all of this description because it's uh, this uh, this uh, this word content verse is a very nice word but uh, from technically speaking right so we are already in there right so we have to think more about trustful resources right so having having this focus on patients on trustful resources we we will be not able 
able to create the noisy information, right? So we have to be focused on quality and value information, and we have to be focused on the controlling this information. And in this regard, uh, um, creating this content verse is like, uh, for me as the technical person from the agency, is the new, the whole new world where uh, we will be um, uh, like defended from the noise and we will have the access to more trustful resources where it will be easier for us, like for our clients and agencies to control the very valuable information, to trace it, to give it uh, when it is needed and through the right channels and to make sure we can update it whenever we want. Look, sometimes one email or one banner is created like six months or something it is um, maybe like it sounds a little bit less meaningful in the whole perspective but once we are focusing on the um, uh, just the reliability of data to have a very trustful data and to, to give the valuable messages it is paramount to make sure like we are agile we are pushing the same message into all our channels and we control it it's valuable and it is easy to find so the data is also really like in control so this for me all like the paramount features which are to be provided uh, in terms of content verse thank you very much Natalia. next question and let's start this time with you megan uh, this is what might be the key pillars when we speak about the content verse and how actually patients and acps can benefit so firstly, categorization, so themes, subjects. Um, and then for me, it's everything that is customer related. So um, consent, preferences, feedback. So you're encouraging that close loop marketing um, and relevance. As a business, um, we should know exactly who it is that we're interacting with. Um, and we should know who we're acting with, interacting with well enough so that we're providing relevant content. For me, it's a little bit like a two-way street. If, our, if those that we're interacting with give us their consent to use a little bit of their data, then it makes sense for everything that we provide them with on whatever channel they choose to be entirely relevant. Um, other benefits would include things like um, more personalized experience, flexibility, um, increased knowledge and choice. Choice, including the choice to, um, to not be overwhelmed by the staggering amount of content that is out there. Um, and then other types of norms should be the ability to access questions at any time of day or night, should you choose to do so. Access across devices or channels, again, that the individuals that we're in contact with choose to use. Um, you're always going to have your usual suspects, but depending on the therapeutic area, the brand, the, the country, and the audience segment will change a little bit what those preferences are. Um, Self-service also should be um, should be at the heart of that or part of the journey at least. Not all individuals want that face-to-face -face interaction or not all individuals want to revert to the face-to-face -face interaction that we had prior to COVID. So it's imperative that we cater for face-to-face -face interactions, those who don't want, and then any sort of combination in between. Again, it comes back to really knowing your audiences inside and out. Thanks a lot, Megan. Natalia. Oh, that's uh, I, I do agree with Megan a lot because uh, actually Megan named everything what I, I had in my mind, right? Because uh, just just to summarize, like findability, you know, like uh, you, you have... A, accessibility and findability of reliable content so it has to be our priority number one then uh, of course the trustful resources which i already mentioned number two and uh, then of course uh, the channels, the, not all of us are able to go face to face, the channels are important, and the uh, content itself, so we have to deliver value, this is first of all, like, especially for clinical trials, for rare disease, uh, for oncology, cardio treatments, this is this is the, the first priority, so uh, I, I do support uh, Megan, and uh, uh, I, I really want to stress that this change 
has to be not driven by competition at any like our world today it has to be collaborative in terms of uh, uh, pharma companies themselves and in terms of different agencies themselves. So it's not a competition, it's collaboration. It's also like very important. Very important. To cool, agree, Natalia. And Suhila. Yeah, no, I totally agree with uh, all what has been said so far from again and Natalia. But I think uh, what I will think about global, globally is that the one source of truth is absolutely uh, very critical and important uh, to, to really uh, think about uh, these uh, patient outcomes that are all, it's all our mind. I think the second pillar we have to, and I'm, I'm just speaking about medical affairs and, and, and pharmaceutical company, what we need to make sure is that we do generate the data that are needed to build this content, right? Uh, you have no right content if you don't provide the right information, and especially how we are evolving with those uh, complex therapies area, uh, the severe disease, which require, uh, you know, a very uh, tailored uh, uh, content approach, right? So that, that, that needs to be anticipated. We need to collect the insight to understand what are the needs from uh, both our HCPs and, and, and patients to, uh, to address these data generations uh, and clinical trials plan. And ultimately, what I'm thinking about, what is, will be the benefit for both HCPs and patients? It will be more about a shared decision-making approach, right? Because mm -hmm. both of them do have the level of information they need to engage uh, in this uh, partnership uh, and to identify the best course of, of actions and treatment for the patients, right? With this care, meaningful conversation and established tr trust. So I, I do see a great value uh, to continue to uh, to expand this content approach and to really feed the needs uh, of both our HCPs and patients um, to, add, to to focus on this patient centricity. Thank you, Zahira. Uh, last question, and let's start this time with you, Natalia. This is uh, we hear really a lot about customer experience <laughs> in almost every single session at Next Normal. Everyone is just speaking about customer experience and. and in the pharma industry. But uh, can you describe how pharma can start to deliver it, let's be concrete, and why content is king and so crucial for proper customer experience? Um, I think this is a very good question. Thank you, Dario. It's a question which is uh, every time it the, in this or other direction flying in all the, you know, in all the conferences and um, I would say, uh, first of all, if we start treating content as a strategic problem, not just the problem of uh, technology or of uh, vendors, because uh, this is the common mistake. It is a strategical problem. So, like uh, how you it's the how you build your content strategy inside organization end to end. This all uh, like all of your success depends on every steps in this chain. So. Mm -hmm. It means from the upstream to downstream, from the teams, from the channels, from everything what you include in your content strategy. So to succeed, you have to rethink the complete operations. Like Megan mentioned, a lot of factors, a lot of factors are uh, really uh, influencing on this success. But um, to be successful, what we also figured out, it's, um, it's impossible to make such a big shift without having, um, like, even not one, several smaller pilots. So it's, it's common. We have to eat this elephant by pieces. So we cannot do this huge transformation just announcing it and starting from scratch it is impossible it will break us uh, all the operations and will stop us it's impossible so my advice is any any time to start with the proof of concept where not only one vendor different vendors can participate because you have to challenge are you ready with the technology? Have you done the right choice of the technology? This is the stream number one. The stream number two, do you have right people on board to run your service, like your team, your people? Then do you have a brand? It's not to sacrifice with the brand. Like 
like less critical brand with which you want to try what countries can advocate what countries can be uh, leaders in this new direction this is also important and what are your appetite this year what is your goal do you understand your goal this year so this all questions if you if you can answer you're able to start a couple of pilots and you will see and you will receive your answers this is the recipe from my side fantastic natalia we will cook with that recipe so. thank you <laughs> hopefully <laughs> to hila Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. I think again, from uh, maybe a different angle, from my perspective, I think everything we need to think about to start with is uh, to focus on unmet need and, and patient journey. Uh, what we are, remains critical, right? I think uh, what we speak about content is also related to the digital engagement, which becomes crucial, and that's why I think everyone is aligned here of uh, having this content strategy uh, set up appropriately to to focus on this content verse. Uh, uh, is is one critical aspect and to be also very brief i will say that i think there is this require a shifting mindset right for uh, maybe in the pharmaceutical company we used to be on uh we still still uh, in the past uh, and i don't speak about my company i just speak about what i see overall <laughs> <laughs> I'm here personally, uh, but it takes time for us to 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 to, to realize that uh, we need to adapt more quickly on the change that does occur uh, in many other space. Uh, that not only for pharmaceutical company. Uh, I think we, I heard in the past on the Netflix, the Amazon, and everything like that. That is a reality of our customers, if you will. And I think that uh, we we have to be more agile to integrate this evolution in our uh, purpose and strategy as well. Thank you, Sudhila. And Megan, final words. And so for me, um, customer experience in the pharmacy industry is no different from customer experience across any other industry. There's one common goal, and that's ensuring the best customer experience at every uh, touch point feasible. Um, it's all about knowing what your customers want, what they need, and how best you can use uh, content to, um, to, to, to serve that. I mean, we all know that in terms of when you're creating content, that content with images is four times more impactful than content just with text. Same with video, 20 times more impactful. Um, the, the whole golden rule about reuse, 80, 20, um, but it's not just a question of um, optimizing the content. You also need um, streamlined customer journeys, um, a real omni-channel experience. So it's a case of um, when you have customers that come to you, it's not like, oh, well, we spoke to you on this channel, but now you need to kind of tell us who you are again. <laughs> that doesn't really work. Um, and then frequent customer feedback should be enabled as well. So this is also listening to uh, feedback that's out there, whether it's directed at the company or not around the company in general. Um, plus the content. And lastly, and the most important point that Suhuli actually touched on was the data that sits underneath and encompasses it all. Um, proper customer experience, um, including content, needs to be data-driven. So how, are the how is the content resonating? Is it resonating? What points, are the, what points are the process are breaking? What lexicon should we use with which type of audience segment? Um, Long gone are the days, unfortunately, um, of when experienced only created content had any sorts of value. Um, what we've got to remember is that despite having the best content strategy in the world, it's only part of the puzzle, as, we, as we've all mentioned. Effective use of the data in and around everything tied to customer experience helps you strive for that shiny, streamlined customer experience goal. Thank you, Megan. We are running out of time. Actually, we went already out of time, but uh, we have one interesting question, which I will take from the audience. And this is sales, sales service is a great idea, but how easy and feasible it is for small, medium companies to manage the geo requirements that comes with the access to a lot of content provided? I think a very good question. Who would like to provide the answer on that? Uh, you mean, um, uh, uh, like, to rephrase this question, there there is a lot of demand from different geolocations right. with the different languages, how right. to manage it properly, right? Exactly. For, yeah. In some perspective of sales service, right? 
yes, uh, self self service, right? Exactly. So so it is uh, it is not easy, but there is a recipe, another recipe. We call it in our organization digital content factory or content hub. It is not obviously has to be one vendor of choice who is doing all white glove services. So what we have to do, like you have to do first, you have to streamline and orchestrate all your requests. For, e for this, there is uh, already uh, a lot of tooling, but there is uh, uh, one, um, a big change across of the organization because there is a new role like demand manager or demand center. So it depends on the huge or small operations you have. So this center has to there all the requests have to arrive and there all the requests have be to be triaged. What does it mean? Because there are a lot of channels, there are a lot of vendors and different types of requests. The center is like the project management center, triages the request and give it to the channel managers or liaison managers. It doesn't mean how you will name these people or multi-channel managers who, who are country specifics, like what one manager can be responsible for five to six markets. What does it mean? That means once the request arrives, it's already triaged. We already know there is the standard pricing. There is the standard of realization. Everything is standardized. It means it goes to the vendor of choice or the, to the separate vendors. It depends on the architecture of the solution. But the main idea is for this center of the, uh, like DCF, digital content factory with the correct right tooling, uh, there has to be the standardization of how the requests are handled. If you start to control your request, you will understand your needs and you will understand the uh, the budgets, the needs on the vendor side and what has to be, um, I would say, uh, automated or adjusted. You just need the, the number one, you have to start to control your request. Then you will be working with your technology, with vendors, with standards, with the delivery. But first you have to this one. Thank you, Natalia. Suhila, Megan, anything to add? I would say that it is possible, even with small and medium-sized companies, definitely possible. Um, I would look probably more to content reuse um, and dynamic overlay um, mm. for different languages. Uh, so you kind of maximize the content that you already have with a minimum amount of effort. Okay. Yeah, and I, 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 do, I do confirm that it's possible there is some, some platform from this kind of, if you take the example of the medical information on, on demand that we do have uh, in our companies is multi-languages and is, there is this approach to tailor uh, the specific languages uh, and, and address the needs. Uh, so I think it's possible indeed. Thank you, Sukhila. So we, uh, we came to the end. Thanks a lot for joining. It's the last session of today. It was very, very much meaningful. Uh, we will, of course, publish it on our official YouTube channel. So Hila, Natalia, Megan, great pleasure. Take very good care. And uh, as we start, I would uh, like to finish it. So Slava Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Slava to heroes. And uh, let's all pray for the first solution. And uh, we will be uh, peaceful very soon. And uh, everything will be right. Thank you for your support. Thank you, very thank, much. You, thank you, thank you, Dario. Thank you, everyone. And we are all with you, Natalia, and all the, the Ukrainian. Thank uh, you. People. Definitely. Thank I'm you. here too. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.